Welcome to Math 096, Lecture 29. Today we are going to start off by continuing the conversation about Section 5.2. So you'll notice here in Example 1, then, I have the directions simplify on today's handout. But after that, I have in parentheses, write your answer using only positive exponents. So what you need to be aware of then is that from this point forward in the semester, whether that second sentence is written or typed on a quiz or an exam or on a worksheet, you know that those directions are there. So simplify always is now going to mean your final answer should be written with no negative exponents. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and check out part A. For part A, we have 3v to the negative second power times w to the seventh power. Now, one of the warnings that I gave you the other day when we were talking about the exponent of zero was that you had to be careful on those problems about seeing which pieces did and did not have that exponent of zero. The same warning applies when you're looking at negative exponents. You have to look at these things and ask who does and who does not have a negative exponent. So when you look at this three, three does not have a negative exponent. If you need to write it, remember that three is really three to the first. That means 3 has a positive exponent. The w over here also has a positive exponent. So we talked last bit of time about the idea that negative exponents move things. But if you have somebody that has a positive exponent, that item won't move. So let's go ahead and look at where all these things are going to be when we're done with the problem. This 3 is currently in the numerator of a fraction. And because it has a positive exponent, it's still going to be in the numerator. So let's in fact come down here and write the fact that we have a 3 in the numerator. And this w also has a positive exponent. This w to the 7th is currently in the numerator. That positive exponent is not going to move it, so it's still going to be w to the 7th in the numerator. The only piece that has a negative exponent is the v. So as you look at that v to the negative second power, the v is the only piece that's going to move then. So this v to the negative second power that's currently in the numerator is going to move out into the denominator as v to the positive second power. At that point, we're done with this problem. So there's our answer. And again, be careful in these problems to make sure that you're not connecting a negative exponent to something that doesn't have a negative exponent. So let's go ahead and check out part b then. For part b, we have 8x to the third times negative 6x to the negative seventh. Now, as I look at this problem, the first thing that I notice is that I have an expression times another expression. So I'm going to move forward with this in terms of that multiplication idea. Now, we saw this the other day, that you have to make sure that you realize that this 8x to the third is not just one piece that can never be broken. It is, in fact, made up of lots of pieces. So when you think about this particular problem, notice that the 8 and the x to the third are connected by multiplication as is the negative 6 and the x to the negative 7th. So we can take all these pieces and parts that are connected by multiplication and just rewrite them in a different order that might be more useful. So instead of having this 8 and then the x to the 3rd next door to it, let's go ahead and move this negative 6 next door to the 8 because the negative 6 looks like the 8. It's another number. And then I can go ahead and come back and do the same kind of thing with all my x's. So we can have x to the third next door to x to the negative seventh. Now that I've done that then, I can go ahead and multiply the pieces that look like each other. 8 times negative 6 is going to be negative 48. And then x to the third times x to the negative seventh, I have x to a power times x to a power. One way of working with that is to, is to say that this is the product rule, and the product rule is going to tell me to add those two exponents. So I would have 3 plus a negative 7 power. Well, if I add a negative 7 to a positive 3, I'm going to get a negative 4. So this is going to be negative 48 x to the negative 4th power. Now, it's tempting at this point to go ahead and say that that's our final answer. But remember our directions. Simplify always means that we need to come in and write our final answer with no negative exponents. So I have a negative exponent here. I cannot leave it there. So now let's think about who's going to move and who isn't. So sometimes people look at this negative 48 and they say, oh, there's a negative with that 48. But the question here is not, is there any old negative? The question is, do we have a negative exponent? 
this negative is not an exponent. So that negative in front of 48 is not going to move the 48. It's simply a number that happens to be negative. So I have a negative 48. That negative 48 is currently in the numerator of a fraction, and it's going to stay in that numerator because, again, it doesn't have a negative exponent. The only thing that has a negative exponent is my x. So we have x to the negative fourth currently in the numerator, and my negative exponent is going to move him into the denominator as x to the positive fourth. And there's my final answer. The fraction negative 48 divided by x to the fourth. Well, now that we have that, we're ready to check out part C. As you look at part C, there are multiple rules of exponents happening here. And again, there are a variety of different ways that you can move forward. One suggestion that I would have is that any time you have a set of parentheses like this, go ahead and simplify the expression inside the parentheses first, and then focus in on what's happening outside the parentheses. So if I think about just the problem inside the parentheses, I have 2x to the negative third. Well, in many ways, that's similar to what we were just looking at. I have a 2, that's in the numerator, going to stay in the numerator, and I have an x to the negative third, that can go into the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 divided by x to the third, and that whole thing is to the negative second power. So now that I have a fraction to a negative power, we have a rule from the other day that talks about fractions to negative powers. A fraction to a negative power means that I can take the entire fraction and flip it. So once again, negative exponents move things. So my 2 in my numerator can become a 2 in the denominator. The x to the third in the denominator can become an x to the third in the numerator. And the negative exponent has done his job. So instead of a negative 2, we now have a positive 2 power. Now at this point then, I have a fraction to a power. We have a rule that says we can bring that power of 2 down to both the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to be x to the third squared divided by 2 squared. x to the third squared is an example of the power rule. x to a power, whole thing to another power, we're going to multiply those exponents. 3 times 2 is 6. So we have x to the sixth, and then the denominator, that's just a number problem, 2 to the second power is going to be 4. So there's our final answer, x to the sixth divided by 4.